Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 11 pro and the iPhone 12 pro have a lot of similarities, but there's quite a few differences as well. And so I wanted to help you decide if you should upgrade from your iPhone 11 pro or upgrade to an iPhone 11 pro, or if you should skip those and go to the iPhone 12 pro or upgrade to it. And so in this video, I'm going to compare everything from price to the displays to speed cameras and more. And the first thing you need to know is the iPhone 11 pro is no longer available new from Apple. So you can't get it at the Apple store or apple.com. You can get it refurbished or from authorized retailers, such as your phone carrier or electronic stores. And the price of the phones is about a hundred dollars cheaper from the iPhone 11 pro to the 12 pro. They usually reduce the price every year. So the iPhone 11 pro is eight 99 to 11 99 and comes in 64, 256 or 512 gigabyte variants. With the iPhone 12 Pro, it starts at 999 and goes to 1299. It starts at 128 gigabytes of storage, then also has 256 or 512 gigabyte options as well. Now, as far as the overall colors, well, the iPhone 11 pro had this new color when it was released, the midnight green color. There's also silver space gray and gold. With the iPhone 12 pro, they got rid of midnight green and now we have Pacific blue. And then again, we also have gold graphite, which is similar to space gray, but different and also silver. Both of them are made out of stainless steel. So they're both equally sort of strong, similar in weight. In fact, they're incredibly close in weight. The overall weight of the phones is about one gram off. So 6.63 ounces with the iPhone 11 pro or 188 grams, 6.66 ounces for the iPhone 12 pro or 189 grams. Like I said, they're both made of stainless steel. They have stainless steel rims on the outside and they're both sort of fingerprint magnets. The iPhone 12 pro, you can see how many fingerprints it has on it just from using it at the beginning of this video. So they're both fingerprint magnets, but the iPhone 12 pro is squared off now where the iPhone 11 pro retains the rounded shape that Apple's had for quite some time. Now they have similar frames. Like I said, stainless steel, we have our power sleep wake buttons on both, but on the iPhone 12 pro, we have a spot for the 5g antenna, which we'll talk more about 5g a little bit later. And then on the iPhone 11 pro below my thumb there, you can see there's a SIM card tray. So on the iPhone 12 pro, they moved the SIM card tray to the other side. So if we take a look at the left-hand side of the phones, you can see that there's the silent switch, the volume buttons, and then on the iPhone 12 Pro, we have a SIM card tray. On the top, they're fairly similar. You just have antenna lines. And then on the bottom, again, they're similar as well. We have our speakers and our microphone, as well as a lightning port. On the iPhone 11 Pro, it's a little off center though. So as you can see, they sort of moved it a little bit. It's now symmetrical from the edges on the iPhone 12 Pro. Now with the iPhone 12 Pro, it is a little bit taller, even though it's squared off, it's slightly taller. That gives you the larger display on the front, which we'll talk more about in a little bit, but you'll see that the, the height of the iPhone 12 Pro is a little bit taller. It's about the same width if we take a look at that. So really the same when it comes to width, but the height is a little bit different. Now on the back of the phones, you have glass as well as on the front, but on the back you have a frosted glass and then around the camera you have regular glass. So it has a really nice finish on the back of the phones. On the front, if we unlock both, you'll see we've got glass on the front, of course, but on the iPhone 12 Pro, it's the new ceramic shield. It's four times less likely to break in the event that you drop your phone. However, it's not less scratch resistant. So I would suggest a screen protector unless minor scratches don't bother you. You'll see I have a screen protector on the iPhone 11 Pro. I'll probably put one on the 12 Pro eventually. Now the displays on both phones are quite good. The iPhone 11 Pro has a 5.8 inch 2436 by 1125 resolution with 458 pixels per inch on the iPhone 12 pro. We now have a 6.1 inch display since it's pushed to the outside edges and it's 2532 by 1170 with 460 pixels per inch. Now, the nice thing is they're basically the same after that. They both support true tone wide color P3. They have the same 800 nits of brightness. If I turn it all the way up. They're very bright. And if you're watching HDR video, which they both can do, you have a peak brightness of 1200 nits of brightness. So they're very similar that way. They both have great viewing angles. Both look pretty good. And I don't really think you're going to notice a difference between the two of them.
Now at the top, of course, we have a notch with face ID and face ID seems similarly or equally fast on both. We'll unlock one more time and you'll see they're very fast. I don't think you're going to have any issues with that. Now inside the phones, the iPhone 11 pro has the a 13 bionic CPU with four gigabytes of Ram and the next gen neural engine, or basically the second gen neural engine with the iPhone 12 pro. We have the a 14 bionic, but with six gigabytes of Ram and a third generation neural engine. So it should be a little bit faster, better at certain types of tasks. Now let's go ahead and maybe test out a couple apps. We'll go into, well, let's go into overcast. I haven't opened that in a while on either. You'll see we're opening it for the first time there. Let's go into the home app and you'll see it takes a second on the older device, which is only a year old, but it's pretty fast. We'll open the cameras and that time the 11 pro was faster. So it really just depends on what you're doing. You're not going to see too much of an issue there. If we go into the photos app, we'll go into one of the photos I created. We'll go to edit and we'll have it auto adjust and let's see if there's any difference in speed auto. They're both done. So it's basically the same. Everything is very close when it comes to regular tasks. However, it may be a little bit different when you're editing video. So let's do a quick test with 4k video and see how fast it exports. Now let's go ahead and open iMovie and I have a 4k 10 bit HDR video that I recorded using the iPhone 12 pro it's my iPhone 12 pro review. So what I did was add a title to it. So it has to re-render everything, but you'll see it's the same video. It's 12 minutes and seven seconds long, and it should be pretty intense for the processors to actually process this and export them. So you'll see 12 minutes, seven seconds. Let me put these down, slide the video over a little bit, get some nice shots here. Let's see what we've got. And there we go. So we've got the same shot. Let's go ahead and slide these over. And then what we'll do is bring in a stopwatch and see how long it takes to export these. So let's go ahead and hit done. So we'll go ahead and hit share on either of these slide up. We'll hit save video and hit start. And let's see what happens here and see how long they take to export. Now you can see the iPhone 11 pro was almost as fast as the 12 pro, but then ran out of space at the end to finish exporting it. But either way, it's incredible that they're able to export either of those files under 12 minutes. So that's something that even a Mac pro would have a hard time doing with a 4k 10 bit HDR file. Now, as far as the back of the phones, well, they're both quite warm. I would say the iPhone 12 pro is a little bit hotter from exporting, but either way, they're going to get warm doing something intensive and both exported it surprisingly fast. Now, both of them have three separate 12 megapixel cameras. They're ultra wide, wide and telephoto. However, on the newer iPhone 12 pro, they've changed the aperture a little bit with the regular wide angle lens to 1.6 from 1.8. That gives it a little bit more light ability to get better dark photos and you get night mode on all of the cameras on the iPhone 12 pro. So the things the iPhone 12 pro gains over the iPhone 11 pro is that wider aperture. You also get Apple pro raw coming a little bit later night mode on all of the cameras, including the forward facing camera, as well as night mode portraits, smart HDR three for photos, night mode time lapse. And then again, that 4k 60 Dolby vision HDR recording ability. You also have this LIDAR sensor in the back and what it helps with when it takes photos is helps with depth. It's sending out light measuring how fast it comes back to give depth of the overall subject you're trying to film or you're trying to record or take a photo of. And so it works really well for that. It also works for augmented reality as well. And I showed this in my iPhone 12 pro vi review video, but it's really great for autofocus and doing things at night with autofocus because that's hard to do without some sort of depth map. Now, as far as the cameras, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the photos and videos I took from both the front facing and rear cameras.
This is the forward-facing camera on the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro. And the cameras should be identical between the two of them, but there is a different neural engine processing all the data in the background between the 12 and the 11. Also, the microphones may be a little bit different. So here's the microphone on the iPhone 11 Pro. Here's the microphone on the iPhone 12 Pro. And let me know which one you think sounds best in the comments below. Now, battery life on both is a little bit different. The iPhone 11 Pro has a 3,046 milliamp hour battery, where the iPhone 12 Pro has a 2,815 milliamp hour battery that's a little bit smaller. According to Apple, they say that the iPhone 11 Pro gets one hour less of video playback than the iPhone 12 Pro. I find that overall battery life of the iPhone 12 Pro is around six hours or five and a half to six hours with the iPhone 11 Pro six to seven hours, depending on what you're doing. So it really makes a little bit of a difference there, but you do have fast charging on both 50% in 30 minutes with a regular fast charger. And then the iPhone 12 pro gains MagSafe. So you have the MagSafe wireless connector. Now, technically you can use this MagSafe connector with the iPhone 11 pro, but it doesn't charge at the 15 watt max charging rate. So it adheres magnetically, it holds the phone, and it allows you to use the phone while connected to a wireless charger. So it's just a nice little option. Like I said, you can use it with an 11 Pro, but it doesn't really hold to the back. It will just wireless charge it. Now, one big advantage the iPhone 12 Pro gets over the 11 Pro this year is 5G. And that's a big advantage for a couple different reasons. One is faster speed. You've got millimeter wave in the United States with this little antenna here, but you also have Qualcomm modems, and that usually leads to better connectivity or reception, at least in my tests. I have less dropped calls. I have it have decent signal strength, although the bars don't necessarily mean a whole lot. I have good signal strength and decent speed. I'm seeing about double the speed when using regular tasks or downloading as I am with regular 4G on the older phone. So let me show you that. I'll go to speed test and you can see I'm at 84 megabits per second is what I topped out at there with download. I'm indoors in a brick building. So I'm getting about 12 megabits per second up and I get about half of that with 4G in the same location. So not only are there speed differences with 5G, there's also that Qualcomm modem advantage where Apple finally made a deal with them to use their modems and they seemingly are a bit better. So you do have that advantage. So if you were on an earlier phone that didn't have Intel modems from say the iPhone 10 on, well, you'll have the same sort of good connectivity you would with say an iPhone seven and even better than that with an iPhone 12 because you have 5g and the faster speeds. Now, both phones have IP ratings of IP68, but the iPhone 11 Pro can survive four meters up to 30 minutes in water or in liquid. And the iPhone 12 Pro is IP68 certified six meters up to 30 minutes. So it gains a couple meters. It has better ceiling and should be better overall. Now, keep in mind, Apple does not cover water damage. You'll still have to pay a deductible if you have Apple Care, or you'll have to pay for your phone if you don't. And they won't cover that, but it should resist sort of dust and water as far as that goes. Now, which one should you pick up for your use? Well, if you don't have an 11 Pro already and you can get a great deal on it and the features of the iPhone 12 don't matter too much, well, then definitely pick up an 11 Pro if you can get a great deal. However, if you don't have any deals or any thing available, I would go for the iPhone 12 Pro just because it's the newer phone. It will also probably get one additional year of support five years from now or so, just based on what Apple's done in the past, although they haven't commented on that. But this is the newer phone. It has the newer technology, the better Qualcomm modem in it, 5G, the better cameras. And they're both great, but if you had the option, I would pick up the 12 unless you had an amazing deal on the 11. Now that said, if you have an 11 Pro, I probably wouldn't upgrade to the 12 Pro unless you have to have the additional 
features such as 4K HDR, video recording, night mode, and the design. I wouldn't upgrade for 5G as that's going to take a few years to really roll out to its fastest speed potential. It will be a while before we see that. So I would say if you're on an older phone, definitely upgrade to the 12 Pro. If you're on an 11 Pro, I would stick with what you have and wait maybe for next year's phone. Either one is good though. I think you'll be happy with either one, but let me know if you're picking one up and which color and things you're getting in the comments below. Hopefully that helps you decide which one is best for you and which one to pick up. And let me know if you're going to pick one up or what you're sticking with in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper in this video, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.